It gives me great pleasure and honor and privilege to mention that we have here the most distinguished Sheikh of Naqshundi Tariqa, Deputy Mawlana Sheikh Muhammad Nizam Al Haqqani, Chairman of Islamic Nazim Al Haqqani, Chairman of Islamic Supreme Council America, Chairman of Sufi Muslim Council. Respected audience, Mawlana Sheikh Muhammad Hisham Kabani. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام Sand that accumulated with time. 
So as they begin to dig, they begin to dig the sand out. And they begin to see this money and these relics of coins, dirham, and all kinds of Muslim coins from different countries of the world. It's not only treasure of Zamzam, it becomes treasure of dunya also. Lot of uh, historical treasures, relics. If they were going to close it, all these relics would have disappeared and the history of Islam would be gone through these coins and through these jars that were thrown in uh, the well of Zamzam that it was falling from pilgrimage. So they dig, they dig, they dig, they went 10, 10 meters down, which is like 30 feet or 40 feet. And then they were not able to go down more. And they, as they are going down, they are seeing more more water coming. So they dig, they brought big machineries. And they were digging, so it was going straight, and then it began to go like slightly with inclination. So you know Zamzam is far from Kaaba, like 30 feet, 20 feet, and then they begin to dig there, and then it began to go in, with an inclination toward the Kaaba. Wow. Then they were able to take the water with, with the, the sand, which was at the beginning of the at the end of the straight, uh, straight perpendicular line, so at the end of it they begin to be able to take the sand down and they begin to see that water is like waterfall coming. It's white, very heavy strong water that they cannot anymore be able to stay down because the water is coming up. So they brought two turbines, huge turbines work on uh, 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 nuclear turbines in order to empty the water that's coming from underneath and to see the original water from where it's coming. So they go to divers, Egyptian divers. Look, they need divers now. After they took the sand out, they need divers to go down. And they were able to penetrate through these two divers and they begin to be able to empty more mud, more mud, more mud, and then more water coming, filling up all the way up to the top of Zanzibar. They were not able to understand. They want to see from where the water now is coming. It's not anymore a sewage, because it's like a Niagara Falls. Falls that they are very strong. So they ask the divers, how much you can stay down before the water push you up? And they said it depends on the turbine how much it will support. So they were able with these two big turbines to put them together and suck the water out. In three minutes the water comes back. So within three minutes they were able to videotape. And they found that the water comes from under Hajar al-Aswad, <laughs> underneath Nile. There is a hole and the water is pouring from there. <laughs> they went more down and they found Hajar al from the other side. They are coming also water from under camp. <laughs> and the order came, don't close Zanzan water. It's a holy water. That coming and never ends. So when we see that and we understand the greatness of Islam, the greatness of this message, everything else becomes easy for us. Because we see the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how much He loves those who are believing in him. He loves those who believe in his prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu So the dominating factor is becoming love more than anything else. That's why spirituality can do miracles. I mean, spirituality, the spirituality, the nafs, purification of the self, can change people. Look, Sahaba, when they went 
to Central Asia. I was visiting in Uzbekistan, near the near China, in Central Asia, and I saw the the cousin of Prophet Sallallahu Kuzub ibn Abbas, was is buried there. And in the history, they say that he turned all Central Asia into Islam. He didn't know the language. He didn't know what, what they, how to communicate with them. How he turned them into Islam? It's through a smile. It's hard to prove that the Lord from the Iman, Prophet said, to bring happiness, to, to make a smile in the face of Allah's servant is from faith. So that smile can change hearts. That's why awliyaullah, they have that smile on their faces that change the people's hearts. Prophet has that, that strong, perfect ability and capacity of spreading the smile in the, in the faces of his Sahaba. Where the Prophet received the message? Prophet did not receive the message in his house. Prophet did not receive first message, first revelation. He did not receive it in the city, in Mecca. He received it in one place where he used to make seclusion. He purified himself. Doesn't need to purify, but it is a teaching for us to do artikaf, as one of the speakers said. Come to the masjid to do artikaf. That is a cave. Fa'u in al kafi, Allah said in the Quran. Run to the cave. This is the cave. The cave is not the city, the cave is here, where you can learn and understand. Prophet was in the cave of Hira, where he was. Always in constant meditation. As Allah said in Holy Quran, Alladina Yaskurun Allah, Qiyana wa Qurudha, wa ala jnubi, wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqi samawati wal ard, Rabbana ma khalaqta hada batiman, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standing, sitting and laying down, and every moment in your life you are in remembrance of Allah busy, to know yourself. Man alifa nafsahu faqad alifa rabba. Who knows himself knows his Lord. If we don't know ourselves, how we are going to know the community and the society? We might make mistakes. The most important is look inward. We are looking out. We must look within us how to Clean myself. How to obey Allah? Allah said in Holy Quran, "Man ata'a Rasul faqad ata'a Allah." Whoever obey Prophet is obeying Allah. Are we obedient to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Obedient to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in everything, in his sunnah that it was mentioned before. Mentioned one small sunnah about drinking, another sunnah about siwak. Are, are anyone is using siwak for his prayer? This is his small sunnah. And ahya sunnah in the fasadi ummah if Allah who has just been a shahid or be a shahid. Who revived my sunnah in the time of corruption? Allah will give him the ashes of seventy martyrs without knowing anything or hundred. So our obligation is to look within us, within ourselves, are we obeying, obeying Prophet or not? Look, Prophet when he was tortured and abused in Mecca. And Sahaba were not able anymore to take it. Within their own tribes, within their own families where they were abused, where Prophet where Prophet sent the Sahaba? To the king of Abyssinia. What happened there? Sahaba went there. They looked at him. They smiled. 
We read the Holy Quran, the Holy Surah of Sayyidina Maryam, Surah Maryam. That king said, My country is open for you. There is nothing, there is no difference between me and you. So, Khatibun Nasa ala Qadari Akulihim, Prophet said, Speak to people according to what, how they can understand. The way they understand. Then this is the way we are dealing with that he asks them. Argue with them in the way, in the best way, the reasonable way. Then you will find them. And that's why I'm speaking to the youth. We are old. We saw many of, mashallah, like this beautiful gathering. But the most important is for the youth is to know how they have to live their lives to continue the message, to continue the patience that Prophet carried it in, in Mecca. How much he was patient? How much of the Sahaba were they died? How much in Medina they suffered? <coughs> but still they were going and never stopping. So our duty is to be diplomat. The duty of the youngsters to be diplomat for Prophet to carry his, his message to the way that people can understand it. It's better to say to someone, I was discussing with someone who is, was, uh, and we don't want to say here, but we are Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah, inshallah, Allah makes everyone Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah. But there is someone that is not very strict from, you know what, was saying to people, I was with him speaking, and he was saying to people that if you don't pray, you go to hell. You have to pray the five prayers. If you don't pray the five prayers, hellfire is for you. And he was speaking to the Muslim crowd. So I'm not expecting the Muslim crowd going to accept. <laughs> They said, why do we have to come to Islam? We pray five times a day, we are praying once a week and one Sunday. <laughs> it's enough for us. <laughs> when I spoke, I said to them, I'm not saying I'm better than Islam, we are the worst. But you have to speak that language. That's why the speaker before me said, you have to know the language of people. How to speak with, the, with their language, you know, they can understand. I said, if you say to them, if you pray to go to paradise, it's not that it's the same meaning, but it's a different way, in an easier way. Pray, you go to paradise. Oh, that is Islam. Okay, we like Islam. <laughs> I was in New York speaking with a group of people, and after I finished, one lady came to me and she said, I want to be Sufi. I said, okay. She said, what I have to do? I said, say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad She said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad She went back and they asked her, where you were? Oh, I was in this gathering. They said, oh, what is gathering? This is not only Sufi, they are Muslim Sufi. She said, no, no, I am my religion, but I am Sufi in my religion. I don't want to say which religion. She said, I'm Muslim, I'm, I'm, I'm a Sufi in my religion. After six months, she came to me and she said, I want to be Muslim. Allah. So, you have to leave the people on their, on their easy way. You have to be, if you, if you leave them to their nature, in order that you build the trust, Prophet built the trust with his Sahab, before, before the message, Prophet built the trust between the tribe. To, to they, they were calling him al Amin, and then when he came with the message, he's al Amin, so immediately they accepted. So tonight is enough for that. May Allah, because Risha is coming, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, and I will thank a lot the organizer that they have invited me for this evening. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Thank you very much, uh, Chef, for your beautiful, generous. Our cons conference was about the challenges of being British Muslim and citizens. Every one of our speakers has put forward a challenge and their own responses to it. I hope that we too can take something from that. The whole idea of the conference is really to inspire us so that we can bring about some change. There is a real need for a change within us so that we can have a change outside of us as well.